Welcome to Filmmaker U Live, where we chat with a professional each week in the film industry to discuss their work and their craft. This week, I'm joined by Bobby Johansson to discuss ADR mixing. Some of his work includes Brave, The Shape of Water, Lincoln, among many, many other films. This, uh, welcome to the show, Bobby. Thank you. Happy to be here. So I guess to, to start off, what would you say would be one of the more difficult aspects of your role as an ADR mixer? Uh, definitely dealing with different personalities. Uh, you know, we deal with actors, uh, directors, producers, um, and everybody has their own way of working. Uh, so I always thought that it's, it's such an important part to adapt to them, not for them to adapt to us. So how we're set up uh, with ADR and, and a really important thing is to be able to work in however anybody, you know, has a, likes to work. Um, for example, if, if an actor doesn't want to see themselves or they just want to hear themselves or they don't want to hear themselves, or, you know, we have to be able to accommodate for comfort. Uh, once your um, talent is comfortable and then it's more about the performance and nothing gets involved and that's what we I've kind of always prided myself uh, on with with doing ADR is, is, is that that's the main basis of, of getting a session going and, and making sure everybody's the way they want to do it. One of the things so a while ago, I interviewed um, Ken Schretzman, who worked at Pixar on okay. Toy Stories and what have mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And he showed me his approach to editing dialogue when he gets it as an editor. Okay. And a lot of it was taking little syllables here, snippets here, little moments here. And he would take, for example, he took, I think it was 20 something different takes of Tom Hanks to make one line of dialogue. Right. Now, I've noticed that you did some work with Pixar and I'm mm -hmm. wondering how getting that from an editor or from from the post team mm -hmm. how do you go about making those sound more uniform or well cohesive well personally I'm a recording engineer uh, ADR um, recording at mixer uh, is my title mm -hmm. but uh, really what I do is record dialogue so I'll record uh, the talent, um, and then that'll go out to uh, another another team. Uh, you know, whether it's a dialogue editor or, or you know somebody in the sound team that will cut and make those. But from my job, it's to record and making sure it's consistent continuity, everything. But here in a recording studio, it's pretty much set. Um, so that part of the aspect is usually um, down the line after they get it from me. Mm -hmm. Well, what about, um, so recreating that environment? Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the issues, um, you know, if we're on a noisy street or what have you, and you're far away, you, you know, getting that perspective and everything, but you're still in a tiny space. Like, right. How would you deal well, with issues like that? I mean, that? that's that's ADR uh, in, in general, what you're saying, <laughs> basically, yeah. is, is you're six months later, you know, whatever it is when you shot the scene. Usually a lot of these uh, actors are on to a next project. Uh, they're in a different character. You know, it's, it's a very difficult process uh, to bring yourself back six months ago off that cold city street into a warm studio and react and perform exactly the way you did then, have it match and so forth. You know, a lot of testament to, to actors is, you know, it, it is a difficult thing to do to get themselves to go back into that, into that headspace because if they're slightly off, if their dialect is slightly off for their character or whatever, it's not gonna work. and. A lot of people have been burned, usually mostly in the old days from ADR, uh, because we didn't treat it um, like we do now. So it was very, you know, static and um, it had, just the quality wasn't there. We didn't try to emulate, you know, the, the, the same miking uh, distances, you know, it, or I say we, this is before my time, but you know, it, it became a hated thing to do. Uh, a lot of old school act, uh, directors uh, don't like ADR because, you know, they've heard it before, it doesn't work. It's, if you do it correctly and you, it's performed correctly, then 
you'll never know it's ADR. Um, I mean, there, that's what, you know, that's one of the great things is when we record something and when we go to play it back, we emulate the way it's going to go into the film. Even though we record it and it's just the recording, it's, you know, there's, got, there's nothing on it, no effects. We put it on just to show everybody how it's going to sound in the film. And a lot of times we get, you know, uh, we get a head turn from the director. It's like, was that the ADR or was that the production? And that's like our biggest compliment, uh, mm -hmm. knowing that no one's going to know. It, and, and there's so much ADR in film and TV that nobody knows it's, it's been, um, including myself. You know, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll watch something. I'm like, wait a minute. I, mean, I know this. I recorded it. You know what I mean? And then I go, yeah, because I know it was the ADR because of the changes that they did. But, I, you know, it's, it's good as long as it, it's, it's, it comes down to the performance. In order to get that performance, you know, um, then once that's there, the rest of it is all tweaking, it's miking, it's just a little bit of different stuff, um, little tricks, you know, to get it to sound exactly the way it sounded on the day. And then it goes into the film. You mentioned the mics earlier. Like, uh, mm -hmm. did you, do you guys try to match the mics exactly? Or do you try to just, in terms of like, you know, it's a, no a Neumann or whatever? Yeah, I mean, there's a, there, listen, there's, we, we, we use whatever, if somebody requests a microphone that they used on a set, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of, you know, uh, the fact is, is that you're out in a different environment and all of a sudden you're in a studio environment. Everything changes, you know. Um, however, certain microphones have different characteristics. You know, uh, again, I'm happy to use what they use on set. Um, some production companies have just a, we like this mic, just use this. And then I'll be like, oh, do you mind if I use this? And they're like, yeah, sure, use whatever you want because that's just a standard thing that we we request. So I like to find out what they used if I could, mm -hmm. you know, but it really, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter so much. A, a thing with ADR too is a lot of times the tracks that are delivered that we're matching that mm -hmm. sometimes are the microphones that they're not going to mix in or like a plant mic or a, uh, or a boom or a lav that they're not going to use or sometimes they mix all the mics together so it sounds totally different and so we've been seeing through things like that for years um it's just the way it goes in the process uh of getting you know uh if it's a final mix that we're doing adr too it's a whole, whole lot better because who cares what they used we'll adjust and use what we think is going to match in there and 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 that works great but really there's no rules you know so we kind of like you know try to emulate exactly what they did or again we're in a studio so mm -hmm. so we'll, we, we make it work we make it match now you, you mentioned that you know at a certain point you, there will be little tricks or techniques that you have mm -hmm. to help make it sound more real is there something that you like or trick or technique that you like to use that young adr uh, mixers could yeah could use? i mean i'm all i'm all about movement um dialogue in films is not perfect it's not voiceover with a microphone in here it's somebody out on the street or in a room walking in from one room to another uh you know with movement you have to be careful because you're committing to it um and there's nothing you could do to change it afterwards but you know i've over the years i've looked at dialogue and, and re-recording it um and I have, I have more confidence now, like, you know, from when I did when I was a kid, I would always be like, you know, make sure you're on, you know, making sure everybody's on mic. Now, a lot of the stuff I do, you know, if you're, if you're walking away, if you say a line to somebody and you walk away from them, I have you twist and turn as you're saying the line. It, it naturally gives you like a Doppler kind of effect that it just, it sets it in better. And again, you're committing to it. So you can't redo that. Like if they're at the mix and they go, well, we want it louder. You know, then you always have the lavalier, which we record with also. So that's, it's a backup to that. But I'm all about movement. And, and I've done films where, you know, I've asked actors to literally throw themselves, you know, back. Oh, we have a couch over here, you know, jump onto the couch and then jump, you know, and it makes it fun. And they understand too, most actors, because they know what we're doing. We're trying to recreate. And again, mm -hmm. ADR has evolved now to the point where as long as it's done right, from them and done right from us you never know it's there as and it's their performance so it's to their benefit to have fun and and and, and do these little yeah. you know things that that i have them do you know but it's it's really you know it's not rocket science but 
it's something that uh, you know you, you play around with. I mean, you you find out what's what works and what doesn't. You always make sure you're covered. But you know, I have. I've committed to sometimes, you know, uh, somebody's in a mask, you know, face mask, and they walk into a thing. Let's record it with the face mask. I've done things, goofy things, like put a lavalier in the face mask. You know, it, there's no rules to what we do. Um, so it, uh, that's what gives it the fun element. And knowing that you're always kind of, you have a take or that's, that's you know, you're, you're covered in case they don't want that. By all means, feel free, as long as everybody's willing, you know, and most of the times, that's the stuff that they use, you know. Now, how, because you, you sort of hinted that this earlier, that, that that old approach to ADR, you know, and I think about just seeing looping sessions where it'd be the same line over and over yeah. and over again. And it gets sort of almost like a, you know, <laughs> a, a test of a mental word. Right. Um, so how do you get actors who've gone through that comfortable because I'm sure they're coming in, you know, guarded and right. not wanting to do ADR. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, a good percentage of actors out there don't like this process, rightfully so. Like I said before, they're already onto something else. And now they got to come back and recreate this amazing performance that they did that they're so proud of because there was a fan on, you know, or a jet or something that, or, you know, whether it was not them, but something else on set, a clink down, you know, yeah. and you, you know, and I, it's up to them to get, you know, to get their performance correct. Like I said, if, you know, if you're, I mean, you have to be a real old school uh, uh, talent now to have gone back to the day where you listen to it over and mm -hmm. over again and loop, looped it and you jump on in and which is why it's called looping. Um, but, you know, I do a thing where I, I just do that with the audio uh, a lot where it's like, you know, if I take the line and it's a complicated line and, it, you know, it's got like a weird pattern to it, a uh, syncopation to the line that they have to do like a pause and then, a, you know, whatever throat clearing. I'll take that line and I'll we go back to that old style of looping it, but mm -hmm. I'll just do it with the audio and you just listen to it and you really kind of embed it in your head and I'll say listen just listen to it a few times boom ba boom ba boom and then you next thing you know you go along with it with pick beeps and they lay it down perfectly and because it's kind of embedded in their head it's the rhythm you just play them the rhythm of what they're trying to recreate uh so you know again it's it's how you like to work there's also a simple way of just copying it you hear it and you just repeat it and then you can take that and i'll play it you hear it you know and i'll play it a lot of times for the for the room uh so that everybody else can hear it including the editor um and you'll get the, you'll get perfect sync, and they say, "Oh, I like the the tenth one of that take," and we'll mm -hmm. take that take and we'll drop it right in. It'll be perfect sync. It allows uh, the performer then to be able to um, not worry so much about what they look like, you know, or what their what their what what the issue is with it. It's just it kind of like just builds it in there, and you're able to then perform it, and you can put a little tweak on it at at that point because you know it's it. it I, it's again, it's 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 a preference to, to how to, how to work. But to what you were saying, most people, you know, that are used to a certain way, will do the certain way. You know, you accommodate, and that's however you're comfortable working is is the way we do it. Now, one of the things I've seen in the last several years is, like you were saying, with the actors being at another, you know, they're on another film. Directors will be on another film, or Correct. will be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I'll never forget having to be in an ADR session and the director was in LA and I was in Toronto with the, yeah. uh, the recorders, uh, the recordist. And I, I just trying to understand how to make sure that they get the best environment, even though they're miles away to judge the performance. Right. How do you guys tackle a situation like that with a director? So you're saying like, basically if the director is just like on well i mean we will do we'll do like but source connect to them which is a uh pro tools to pro tools um connection and you're able to then hear it um if they're in another studio uh you know i go back to the day i i started this game pretty young i was like 18 when i started uh, and i started working in adr i was a machine room guy it was back in the film days and in those days, the directors would always come because 
there really wasn't anything like what we're doing here, Zoom, Skype, you know, mm-hmm. even Source Connect. It was all film. So the directors were always at the ADR sessions. If anything, they would phone in. It would be a phone patch um, for them to hear. So they would monitor uh, the performances and l- listen for what they got, and they would rely on... I mean, I was in the machine room, but they rely on the, the engineer or the mixer to, to make sure the sync is correct. And if there's any question with sync, you know, if they're, are you sure? It's simple. You just play it back with the original underneath it, and you can hear. And if, if it sounds like it's right on, it assures them that sync is right on. But nowadays, um, with connections like this, uh, you can have FaceTime with the director. Um, just helps. Uh, and then we'll record Source Connect and... You know they can see the, they they can see the image because their Pro Tools. If they're in another studio, their Pro Tools is locked to our Pro Tools, and what we see is what they're seeing wherever they are in the world. So they're looking at picture, which they have on their own side, but it's locked up. You know, and um, so it's almost like they're in the same room, but there's a little bit of latency between the communication. But they're watching everything and hearing everything in sync on their side. So it's evolved to the point now where. You know, we get our uh, directors here, uh, but not like we used to. You know, it's just no reason for somebody to have to fly across the world for a two-hour ADR session. What would you say is the most challenging scene you had to tackle or challenging moment as an ADR artist? I did a a movie um, called Where the Wild Things Are, and um, that was one of the hardest records I ever had to do. It was Spike Jones, who is I got to watch as... This guy's an amazing director. I mean, I was able to actually watch him direct. It was almost like a production shoot, but what what it was is they had these puppeteers act out the um, the movements and everything, and then they were gonna like kind of like CGI their mouths a little bit to make it. And we were re-recording the dialogue, or pretty much pre-recording the dialogue for that film. But Spike wanted to do it with all the actors in the room. And he brought props in. And at this this time, I was at a place called Sound One, which is an old school classic uh, uh, sound facility where I grew up, basically. Um, and I was in a stage about this size. Uh, it was, you know, a decent decent size uh, ADR stage, but it was nowhere near, you know, what they needed for this. And um, he brought in rocks, like made of, um, you know, whatever it was, foam, and so they could be thrown at each other. And it was like a whole a whole setup. It was a. At one point, I think there was three cameramen, because you needed to shoot it for the uh, for the animation of the lips. So, and he wanted no. You know, it was all movement. So I had three actors with lavaliers on their um, on headbands, and so right above their nose, and then um, three boom operators, three cameramen, the director, the editor, and the three actors, in a room like this, and it was. Uh, impossible to monitor because of the way we're set up. If you're a field recorder, you know, then you have everything in a, uh, you know, again, that's a whole different story out on the field. But it was um, it was so terrifying to uh, record this because I couldn't monitor every microphone. And um, in the end, you know, uh, the, I wasn't these packs that we were wearing for the lavaliers. The batteries kept on running out. But then I figured out regular batteries. You know, you get these supercharged batteries. Boom, that's done now. That'll hold. So, and you start to hear this stuff back and go, hey, "That sounds pretty good." Sounds. And then confirmation from the editor, and you get more comfortable with it. And by the end of the job, you know, it was uh, it was one of the best things I've ever done enjoyable things. I, I got to watch like Spike Jones record, you know, with, with Jim Gandolfini, you know, rest in peace, who I got the chance to work with in The Sopranos and uh, and that film and a bunch of other films who I, I, I adored. Um, and watch them actually physically move and act, you know. Here I I look at their backsides, you know, when they're at the podium, and they're looking at the at the screen. and But I never really got the chance to sit there and have him coming towards the control room, you know, with a big rock and throwing it in which they were, you know. So it was really exciting, but terrifying. And it was the hardest recording I ever did. But it came out, uh, you know, um, Rich Quinn over at um, Skywalker did put it together. I ended up seeing the film in in a theater. I went, wow, it it sounded great. Uh, But uh, that was definitely a challenge. And way out of the ordinary of what we do, you know, and, you know, so... 
Well, that, I was going to, would that be your, what was, I guess, what would be the scene that you're most proud of then? If that's the most challenging, what is the scene that you're like, I just, I to, love showing that to people. To, to be honest, and I, I'm totally honest, that I don't really watch movies that much. I don't really watch TV that much. I like dumb reality shows. <laughs> be honest it's not it's not because it's what i do and people say oh you probably do it you know i got into this business because i was a kid into music and i worked with music studios when i was about 15. i started sweeping floors in local recording studios in long island and uh i was out um late with a band one night uh, uh, from the big big band from the 80s um that i used to drive around and I sat with them and it was like two o'clock in the morning on a Sunday night. And I went, man, this is so cool. We were in Atlantic studios in, in, in the city and, and everything's running around. And it was like daytime because people are running around. And I go, this is so cool. I go, I wonder if I want to do this when I'm 30. I wonder if I'd be able to do, you know. And then meanwhile, when you're 30, you know, it's like it was an epiphany that I had knowing that I really love recording and I love this whole thing and I love recording studios and the whole thing. But it's it's not. I, you know, eventually I'd like to have a normal life. How can I do both of this? It's two o'clock in the morning on a, on a Sunday night. So my father, fortunately, was is a, was a big colorist. Um, and he knew a connection. And he, he knew a gentleman named Lee Dichter, who was a friend of his, big mixer at a place called Sound One. And he asked if there's any, if I can get a number or contact. And I, I got a contact there and I put my name down on a, on a list and I was called in as a messenger. And that's how I got in this business. And I'm grateful because the days of the recording studio for music, like when I was growing up, are over. They don't exist anymore. Yeah. So I'm able to have a career in audio, but it's not why I got into it. I, I, I was never a film lover. You know, I, I, I can appreciate great film and I can appreciate great acting. Um, but it's not something I do. So to answer your question, you know, there's there's a few things that I record and went, eh, that sounds pretty good. But um, you know, it's really it's not a it's not a thing for me. You know what I mean? So then I will pivot and say, is there an album that you really like from its recording perspective? Uh, I mean, I like Joe's Garage by Frank Zappa. I think that's a brilliant <laughs> album. Uh, he was it was done in his recording studio at home, and they did a lot of cool things with it. Um, other than that, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, I appreciate my family, you know, it's like, I, 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 it's not, I'm not so much of an artsy guy. I can, I know about it. Um, I work in it. Uh, you know, I work with people in it and it's, uh, I, I can sit back and appreciate it, uh, you know, but if, if I go to the theater, which I try not to, cause it's just not for me. You know, I'm bored. I'm sitting in a play and I'm like, you know, I get it. I get it. And everybody is like, you know, they loved it. And I go, ah, you know, it's just not for me. I, I, I'm just, I'm pretty simple when it comes down to uh, down to that. I like to socialize with friends and, 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 and be with my family and stuff. But other than that, you know, this is just, it, it is a job, but it's something that I also um, have a lot of passion about. And I've been doing it for a pretty long time. So, So one of the questions I've been asking everyone this and this, so this might be a tricky question to ask since you don't watch a lot of television and films but usually i'm asking because of covid we're all sort of stuck in our houses right. and there's been a lot of watching of streaming services uh usually i ask you know is there a show or a movie you discovered that you would recommend but is there a reality show we should be checking out i like the things from alaska i mean it's just anything in, done in alaska i live in new york i've never been to alaska before I don't know if I even want to go to Alaska. I just like, <laughs> I like that whole thing, you know? And again, I know a lot of people that work in reality TV and I understand it's, you know, it's staged, but I don't care. I, I, it's mindless to me, you know, and I watch somebody, you know, out there chopping wood or whatever. I go, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Cause it's not what I do. You know what I mean? And it's like, oh, I'd rather watch other people. It's mindless for me to, I don't get that into it. And I just, I, 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 Again, I appreciate it for the fact that it's like relaxing time for me. You know, to watch a film, I do sometimes. Like I used to, when I did The Sopranos, I took it over in the last like three or four seasons. Um, and 
it was all New York actors. So you would do everybody. And I would kind of like check it. You know, I was asked to, you know, make sure, you know, so I'd have to watch it. And I was like so uncomfortable watching it because I was like, oh shit, here comes ADR. And then all of a sudden, you know, it would play through and I'd be like, oh, that sounded good. That's, but you know, it, it, it's, it's just not, you know, to spot check things like that. I, it's not a comfortable thing for me. I'll, 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 I'll watch something that I've done before, but it's not, I don't go out on purpose to do it. You know, it's more like if you're invited to a screening, I'll, I'll go to be supportive and, and you know, and, and I want to see some of these movies and I want to support them. You know what I mean? But it's, it's not necessarily something that I f would do, yeah. you know, on my own, just me. Well, thank you so much for letting us interview. You're very welcome. And may I uh, just add to this? Um, sure. You mentioned home uh, because of the COVID. Um, we've been actually recording people at their homes um, for during this time. Um, I, right now, I'm back at the studio. We've been here all week. It's been great. Uh, we're very careful uh, here with everything, sanitizing and everything. We're mm -hmm. sagging after approved. and But... but um, the home recording thing has been going on for a while, and uh, you know, I'd rather be in the studio. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think actors would rather be in the studio too. It's, yeah. it's not, you can't, you, you're, you're not free enough to, uh, to do the things, and, and the biggest thing is nobody has a, a, a recording studio in their house. If anything, they have a booth, and it's a voiceover thing. So, um, you know, that's something we've been doing, but. Uh, you know, the more things get back to normal again, that uh, I love it. I almost feel that it would be worse because they're also not, when you're not in the room, you have your phone there. You have right. like all these distractions. Your dog runs by. And... Right. It's a whole thing. I yeah. mean, garden, in the summer, it was gardeners. Uh, yeah. You know, you'd start to hear a buzz and it's the neighbor's house. What are you going to do? Run out there. And so it's, it's. I called it emergency ADR. I still call it emergency ADR. Uh, I understand also about people not wanting to get out and go into the city. Uh, and, and by all means, don't do anything you're not comfortable with. Because again, once you're here, you're safe. But yeah. getting here is a whole different story. So I get it. But it's just, it's like I said, I, I call it emergency recording. Um, we'll get it recorded, but it's not what you would get if you're able to come in mm -hmm. to a setup like this, a, 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 an area that's designed exclusively for re-recording dialogue. Yeah. So. It's not the best ADR, but it, it'll get done. <laughs> it'll work, but you're certainly gonna, you know, yeah. it, it works, it works. Yeah. But, um, you know, again, it's it feels good to be in the studio. Uh, you know, I've been here in a studio for many years now. So it's it's, whether it's here or another facility or another facility, you know, it's what I know, and, and I'm happy to do it. And, and I actually really like my job. Um, sometimes it depends on who you're working with. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it's good. Well, thank you so much for letting me interview. Well, it's been a pleasure, and yeah. uh, you know, good luck and be safe. Thank you. You All too. Right. Okay. Right. Have a good Bye. one. You too. Bye.